Good morning, church, and welcome to worship. It is June, so happy Pride Month to all. And it's also Communion Sunday. So let us get our elements ready to take communion together. And you know, week after week, as we gather together like this, even though we're physically apart, still in our own homes, still on the screens, I'm always reminded of how beautiful the entire body of Christ is. Even those who are not with us are still part of the body and we are reminded of them as we gather. And we are especially glad though that you have chosen to worship with us today. So again, welcome as we worship our God who is all holy. courts above. Oh, let us pray, church. This is taken from something called Shelter God, written by Black Liturgies. Help us to trust the promise. There are times it feels like our present reality will always be. It becomes difficult to dream. Our imaginations for healing and health are far too small. Expand them, God that we might grow the branches of hope into something we can cling on to without being, them being buckling under the weight of our next tragedy. Let our dreaming be our rest, a shade from the heat of the evils of this world, that our alienation and oppression would not resign us to the wilderness. Be who you say you are. If you are a stronghold, then keep the marginalized within the walls of your chest if you are a destroyer of the veil, come and let it fall from the eyes of those who do injustice and make death and protect our dreaming, Lord, that as we wait for you, our hope would not be tarnished by our tears, but renewed sacred glints of light in the darkness. Amen. Our scripture text for this morning is taken from Psalm 130 a song of ascents. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. 
the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon God's promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I've proved you o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust you more. God, today we are watching for your grace. We are trusting you more. We are waiting for you to answer our every question. Today we are dreaming and believing that our waiting will not be in vain. Amen. I walked through the lectionary for this week's sermon, but the spirit led me to Psalms instead. Truthfully, I have a deep praise in my heart today. There are things happening in my own life and for those around me that have been a long time coming. And I wondered what it would be like to try not to just sing a Psalm or quote a Psalm, but to preach through one. So here goes. For as much as I feel the ground beneath my feet today, I can remember dark places, very sad places of my past. And I just want to say personally that I've been having some really wonderful days lately, days full of the fruition of delayed gratification, challenges that I've been waiting to change for a long time, years even. And as much as I relish in that joy, I also remember what it was like to be in a deep pit. I remember what it was to cry out to God and wonder if God even recognized the sound of my voice anymore. I will say that remembering, that's the difference, and that is the beginning of faith. It is significant to identify with the very beginning of the 130th Psalm in our worship experience. And while some of us may be on a mountaintop, there is likely someone else we love, a neighbor, a stranger in the grocery store who cannot see past the dark pit of this present circumstances. The dark deep can be a troubling time. The scripture meditation this week made me sit with the testimony and the story of something that's been in the news or even your backyard. It brought me to a popular or infamous species of the moment who knows something about dark depths, the cicada. Yes, brood 10, the present species of cicada many in the East Coast are experiencing is an insect whose journey has been long. The cicada lives as a nymph, eight feet underground for 17 years. And I've been trying to imagine what that would be like as a person to be in a dark place waiting for 17 years. I mean, I've watched customers freak out after waiting for seven minutes in a restaurant. <laughs> so Hannah, she waited over 10 years to birth Samuel. The Count of Monte Cristo was in prison for 14 years, Nelson Mandela for 27. Time like that can wear you down. There's faith and there's hope, but almost a decade worth waiting for one thing, one person, that's tough. And we've all waited a bit, even in this last year, we know about waiting. But I was blessed by reading this Psalm through the experience of the cicada. I kept wondering, not unlike those who are incarcerated, those living with chronic illness, those separated from their home country yearning to return, I kept wondering, what should we do in the meantime? I mean, what do cicadas do during those 17 years? Well, the science articles say that the cicada is able to find what they need 
in the darkness. In many ways, the dark depth of the ground is where they find the nutrients that feed them for them to grow. They live off the roots of plants and trees. They are always growing. They are waiting to sing, waiting to mate, waiting to continue the longevity of their species. And for those 17 years, they keep on going. So the scripture, Psalm 130, tells us something that we get in return for our waiting in the dark deep. We get God's attention. In the midst of the darkness, the psalmist petitions God to hear their voice. Part of our faith in Christ is that he is listening and he does hear. Now that would probably only change the way you felt about it if you have already known what it is to be heard by God before. My God. If you have yet to witness God move in your life, then the waiting, the waiting I think feels mostly impossible. If it's your first time having your mind blown by the possibility of the divine, then I get that struggle. But for those of us who have waited before, for those of us who have crawled from exhaustion, being overwhelmed and almost done, staying on a crummy job or saving up for a dream and then encountered God's intervention, we can believe in God's hearing ear and tangible embrace. We can proclaim and praise that we know God, that he is all attentive, all merciful, faithful unto us because we've been there and we remember. And for those of you who are not quite familiar with God in this way or who aren't quite sure about this whole waiting for God thing, I can say for myself as a believer that God has heard my cries for mercy. And I believe that God hears you too. Now, I can't promise that every one of your desires or prayers will be answered the way you want. God doesn't promise that either. But I can guarantee that God hears you. God is an active listener. God is not always silent. There are affirmations along the way. Sometimes they are found in our friendships, in the simplicity of a day that just goes right. Still, God is not passive. God is listening to you, church. In verse four, the psalmist explains that we know God hears us for all the ways God continues to forgive us. During our waiting, God could keep a record of our wrongs, our sin. The Hebrew says that God could literally keep and watch out for our sins, but God does not do that. Instead, God forgives. What if God was not paying as much attention to your mistakes as much as God is listening out for your cries for mercy. Would you then wait for God with all of yourself? Would you be willing to put all of your hope in the basket of God's responding to you with merciful kindness? That is what this song is about. There's a dialogue here. For while God is actively listening, God is watching us actively wait with our whole selves. God sees us getting ready and restoring our faith, gathering what we can in the shadows for when the sun will shine again. We are not to be dormant and sleeping, but like the cicada ever growing, ever waiting for the right temperature and the right time to come back to life above ground. Before we go, let's explore the watchman metaphor. It's kind of my favorite just for a minute. It's repeated twice as a chorus in this Psalm. The watchman searches the streets when others are sleeping. They secure the borders and walls of the city. They may be anxious in their watching, hoping that nothing will happen at night, but the watcher is ready. In situations not unlike what is happening in Palestine or Israel, the watcher is actively waiting for the sign of days breaking. Waiting for the morning here means that the watcher's shift will be over when the sun shows up. They are now free to do something else and declare one more night of peace, more than the watchman waits for the morning. We all know what it's like when we can't 
wait for a day to be over just so the next one will hurry up and come. When you are reunited with the love of your heart or when your child comes home from a long trip or maybe it's that big day of a great celebration. Some people philosophize about waiting. They want it to make sense to them. I had a friend ask me, so like, what's the purpose of the cicada? What is it waiting for? I've decided that the answer is not sophisticated or complicated. The cicada's purpose is to live, to wait out the darkness so that they can see and experience God's creative mercy. So I just wanna note that for any of you who feel something you did made God cause you to wait longer as punishment, that's not what this scripture says. And that is not the God that I serve. It might not seem glorious to you, but I wonder what it feels like for the cicada to have waited that long and finally to be above ground in a different place with a new opportunity. This is their chance, what they've been waiting for. So yes, the cicadas are a little creepy and terribly slow, but I just can't help but root for them. There's a little celebration going on inside of me when I see them because I commiserate with what it was to wait to live again. Come up from a pit and breathe fresh air and, and I don't fear them because I know they're not here for me. They're not after me. They are after life. They are reaching for the trees to eat, to feed and to nurture themselves for their next cycle of life. And so it is that I am rooting for you as you flutter and sing for your own life. I celebrate with you in love for all that you are waiting for too. But the distinct difference between this Psalm and much of our human experience is that we are often waiting for things or situations, but the Psalmist is waiting for God. In this season of Pentecost, I want to declare that we need not wait in that same way as the psalmist. For us, God is present and available. For us, we need not wait for God. God is already here, having forgiven us and offering redemption. And so our sharing and communion this morning, let us celebrate God. Let us in communion reconcile and declare the wait is over. Although we are not together in the sanctuary, let us not forget the call to worship. This lovely Psalm reminds us of seasons in our lives when we walk through dark moments and feelings when our hope in God might waver. But by the end, your souls can at least witness the ascent of the spirit. Psalm 130 is what is called a song of ascent, a song of degrees. It is to be sung in repetition over and over. It seems intended to lift me as the lyrics change, for it ends in reconciliation, a new morning, unfailing love. It ends in our eternal redemption from all that had separated us from the divine. This Psalm calls us into worship to meditate on God's great mercy and love. And we invite you to engage with God during the rest of this service as if you had been waiting all night long for the beginning of this new day. We must reimagine that connection with God, practice it all over again. What it was to sing songs in the shower, fall asleep praying, sitting along a stream and tracing the spirit's movement through the light in the water. However it has been that you have been with and relished the presence of God, let us go there today. Let's get inside of the cicada song and the buzz of their living. Let us wait for God, wait for God, feel God and celebrate God. After I finish preaching, you will hear a song with a, sim a similar theme. And as you listen to the following song, let the ascent wash over you. Let the rise of and flourish of the notes build up in your heart. Celebrate with us how waiting on God is not a passive languishing, but an active hoping that something will change when God arrives and shows up in us. 
and let us give our whole selves to the God we have waited for. Keep looking out your window. Keep looking to the sky for change. God is near. Amen. Ooh, I'm going to wait on you. Ooh, trusting his promise. Friends, it is now time for us to pray together. We invite you to type into the Zoom chat your joys and your concerns. We shall take this time to pray silently as we remember our own petitions and the petitions of others. Let us know what we can be praying for more specifically. And if you're watching this at another time, please feel free to always email your prayers to prayers at triconchurch.org. Looking in the chat now. This morning, we are lifting up prayers of healing for Marie Sharapa as she continues to recuperate. We are also praying for Otto, love and prayers for our dear Otto. We're also praying for Jen and Mary. Pray a blessing for my little cousin today. Christian is his name. We pray for Carolyn's birthday today and for Mark who, could, who would have been 60 today. What a legacy. We are praying to those, for those who are crying from deep depths. Yes, oh God, because you hear those cries. We're praying for families struggling with mental illness. God, make space for them to share their concern and to be comforted. And we are praying for the Kinch's 57th anniversary. God, we continue to look out for you in the morning. We are believing that you're going to show up on our behalf, just as you have every other time. We thank you for being a God of promise and a promise keeper. We pray for tolerance and the knowing of each other, O oh God, that we would connect in the spirits and make time for fellowship and kinship to listen to each other, to hear each other, so that we would know each other in the fullness of our spirits and identities. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and the resurrection that is promised we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember that all are welcome to our worship service. If you would like to join our church or get information about our community, please follow the Welcome to Tricon link in the chat. Um, that link is Welcome to Tricon, and it's a little tiny URL for more information. There are more, no major announcements this morning. 
And we'll now hear a word from our stewardship speaker, Abby Wester. Hi, my name is Abigail Wester and I have been attending Tricon since I was a child. I participated in youth group, went on mission trips, and was confirmed in the spring of 2012 with much of my confirmation class. As a young person, Tricon quickly went from just being a church to being a particularly safe space for me to go when the stress of high school or my teenage years would start to get to me. Through my interactions with Bob Brown and other remarkable members of the Tricon community, I was always reminded of just how cherished I am in the eyes of God. Over the span of my college career, I had a pretty remarkable shift in my relationship with the Holy Spirit. I took on a new perspective when it came to the role of God in my life and began to reevaluate the direction that my life was headed in. I tried out different churches in Pennsylvania where I attended school and even to different denominations to see if there might be a better fit for me than Tricon. But no matter what, Tricon was always home to me. I found myself looking forward to the sermons posted online and would find peace listening to each one each week. More recently, I had an even bigger change in my relationship with the Holy Spirit as I felt myself being called to apply to seminary. Without even wondering if it would be okay or if he might have forgotten me in the passing years, I reached back out to Bob Brown to discuss this life change with him. At Tricon, I have always felt seen, known, and loved by my congregation, so I always feel welcome to ask any question I have, knowing there will never be any judgment or criticism on the other end. Through prayer and conversation with my Tricon family, I decided to apply to Boston University's seminary program, and I will be starting my program there in September. I can say with complete confidence that I would not be anything near the person I am today without the strength and love of Tricon behind me. Especially now, I want to do what I can to give back to my congregation to help them provide the same support to people who might need it. Thank you all for your continued and generous support to Tricon Church. Let us pray. Oh God, in response to the love which you have poured into our hearts, we dedicate our giving and our living to you. May our lives bear witness to that love in all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Oh, the beauty of God's peace indeed. We come now to Holy Communion, to the joyful feast of the people of God. By the mysterious wonder of our triune God, we celebrate a feast, not just for today, but for all time. Joining with Jesus and his disciples in an upper room, with sisters and brothers in faith through time and space, with people we know well and with people we don't know at all. Picture, if you can, people in homes all over the place, all throughout Concord, across the Commonwealth, on the other side of the Mississippi, on the other side of the world. Picture Jesus inviting them to sit with him and rest, to receive nourishment for their souls. This is Christ's invitation to us as well. Indeed let us confess. And so we confess before God and each other. When we forget what God's ways lead all to the blessings of justice and mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we forget that God's way leads all, especially the most vulnerable, to blessings of safety, health, meaningful work, Christ, have mercy. And when we forget that God's ways lead all to the blessings of the shared abundance of God's beloved creation, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We praise you, O oh God, for establishing a hospitable place a fruitful garden where people you loved into being were invited to live in harmony with you. When they turned away from you and closed their ears to your words, you didn't abandon them. Through the prophets, you reminded them of your past deeds. When liberating them from slavery, you led them to freedom through the wilderness simply because they were chosen and beloved by you. In the fullness of time, you revealed how unchanging your love is by entering our history in the person of Jesus Christ, who touches our lives with healing and wholeness and an unending and unconditional love. He proclaimed your coming kingdom in word and deed, challenging the powerful, healing the sick and distressed, and calling all people to live in light and life. Even though he was executed by the powers of the day, you raised him to new life to show that your power was stronger than death. Remembering his life, death, and resurrection, we are now gathered to share this feast of heaven and earth, that by your power, we might be united with you and one another in this bread and cup. And we pray that the sharing around our tables will bear witness to the love which has been poured out into our hearts and lives. We remember that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he sat around the table with his friends. He took the bread in front of him, blessed it and gave thanks saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Similarly, he took the cup that was in front of him blessed it and gave thanks saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. O Lord, you gave your son for the last and least of all people. We remember this and we give thanks to you. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, and upon these gifts of bread and cup that they may be for us, the body and blood of Christ, his life in us. Renewed by his life and recreated in his image, may we set our minds on fulfilling your purpose for us and this world of which we are a part. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Body and blood of our Lord, let us eat and drink and remember.
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that we have been fed and renewed by Christ's life in us. We give you thanks that you pour out your spirit of love and hope that we might rise from this holy meal to love and serve in your world, to spread the message of Christ's love to all whom we meet. In his name we pray, amen. Our worship has ended, and now our everyday praise begins. God, finish what you started in us. Your merciful love is eternal. Go with us now into the world that we may profess to all that it was worth the wait. Amen. Good morning, Tri 